how do like how does a church besides an eyeball test of hey it looks mm. like the pews are you know emptier this month is there any more like uh analytical way that the church is looking at attendance so i i know in our parish like we take attendance in sunday school that's like that's mm. the most like systematic most analytical um like measurement that we have but um i'm definitely conscious of the trends that i'm seeing you know Mm -hmm. and like one trend that i'm seeing i don't know if this is true in your parish or but this is a trend in our parish is that um attendance to liturgy is starting to to wane a little bit you know especially among our younger youth you know they, when they just don't have like the attention span to and they don't have the desire and maybe even parents don't have the desire to attend liturgy. so many parents just bring their kids for like end of liturgy and maybe sunday school when did uh, you start noticing that trend oh i've noticed it for for a, for a little bit but now i'm a little bit more vocal about it and i'm trying to address it a little more like head on mm -hmm. um so but i think part of the like the reason for it is um and i hate to be so like blunt about it i think it, it starts at the family and the priorities of the family and so if the family doesn't set like liturgy as a priority then it's like it's not being passed down to the kids yeah so um, what i notice is like on that point about the family and liturgy that is kind of troubling is i don't know if this happens at your parish or maybe it's an la thing because everyone has a car but like families don't go to liturgy as much together like as just one unit walking in it's like the kids will show up the parents will show up maybe even the kids will drive separate cars it yeah. doesn't feel like it's like a family entering in together to worship it's just like a bunch of individuals you know yeah um, i think it's a little different for like you know it depends on the family and like proximity to church like a lot of factors there mm -hmm. but uh one of the things that i mean like our high schoolers they take multiple like if you're in line they take multiple cars to church because they want to hang out after they want to do right so, okay you know yeah. so I, I think it's a it's a little complicated there but my concern is that even like the the parents of our younger children like in elementary they are like bringing their kids late to church you know so mm. they're start, starting off this cycle like on on the wrong foot, you know? Yeah, and the church doesn't really enforce any kind of, uh, you can't take communion if you're, you know, I don't know, the rule, it keeps on changing if after the absolution, after the gospel. Uh, yeah. I feel like the church is very merciful, which I think is a great thing. Um, but what is what is that is there actually like a, a canon on this or what I mean, do you think what do you think like, should happen in that regard or and do you think it would actually make any difference so i i started to enforce a rule like and by enforce i mean if a deacon comes in past the like uh past uh, like after matins so like i i were i try to ordain like the tunics like once like that's my goal it was like i'm only doing one like uh, one in the name of the father the son the holy spirit if you can't catch this the, yeah like, and so anyone who comes after that i kind of just give them like the death stare and i just look at my watch and, like, but then i'll still bless their tunias but like what i've noticed now is that like all of the deacons they've come earlier but now my issue is now like so we'll have like the whole church will be just at the front and then the whole church will be like empty until like like a little bit before the gospel like then you start to see a lot of people you know so do you, do you attribute any of that uh decrease in liturgical attendance to just a pandemic or do you think oh should, definitely should... i think at the pandemic uh hurt us a lot but i also think it's like part of our culture I mean, we're just like, we just love to be late to things. And I think maybe there's like a, a fundamental principle that I think people don't understand is that like 
liturgy is like a duty. It's a duty. Like it's the work of the people. Like, like, you know, I'm sure like there's days on Sunday. I just want to sleep in, you know, but I can't sleep in because mm -hmm. it's my duty to be at liturgy, you know? And if I, if I slept in, then the liturgy stops, you know, but right. if, if anybody else decides they want to sleep in, like liturgy just goes on as usual. And because we don't have, we don't feel a duty or we don't have a sense of like, this is important for me, or I have a value in the church, then it's okay if I come, you know, 8.30, 9.30, 10, it's, it's all the same. Like, yeah, Abuna's going to be doing his thing. The one or two deacons, they're doing their thing. And then we're just like spectators. And I feel like that mindset is really damaging to to the church you know and do you think the the fact that there are also just so many liturgical services per week that people also i i find myself doing that like oh i was there on friday sunday i'll come whenever i want um do you yeah, think I we think have a like duty a for are... for sunday in specific or just if we did one, then, then you know, Sunday's kind of like, like, you know, I think just practically people are like that, right? Like I went to one liturgy this week on time, whatever. So Sunday's like a, a cherry on the top, you know? Yeah. There was a, there was a quote in the apostolic constitutions and I can't remember the quote verbatim, but it was pretty much like what the quote said was, worship is your primary business your primary business. And I think if we think about worship in that way, then like you work five days a week, you work six days a week, you work whatever. That's your like, and work, that's supposed to be your, your side business. Mm. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Just like worship is supposed to be your primary business. And so like, you know, to the people that say, oh, I went once a week. I think that like kind of gives the impression that like, Okay, like cafe alea, you know, like that's enough, yeah. for, enough for me. But mm -hmm. I feel like you like we don't have this limit with with God, you know. We shouldn't have this limit with God. Right. Well, worship is your primary business. I like that. Yeah, worship is your primary business. Remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs>